Hey everybody, welcome back to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. I am Duke. That is Van. Got it again. And we're very good. Oh, I, I didn't I get it. This. There you go. I got this down, yeah. um, and we're excited to have back with us this week uh, Douglas Porter from Sailorville Church in Des Moines, Iowa, and uh, Brad Zimmerman from Watermark of Michigan, not Watermark of Texas. We got very different watermarks, but uh, I forgot what city it was in. Uh, I'm in Grand Haven, right on Lake Michigan. Grand Haven. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful area. Yes. I've been up there a few times, at least uh, for the summer, uh, not so much in the winter. <laughs> It depends how much you like winter activities is is the thing that I've realized living in Michigan is like you can enjoy every season here if you like choose to enjoy every season. But if you don't like mm. winter, yeah, it's a little rough. I mean, I like some winter. I don't know that I like that level of winter. Yeah. So. Hey, it's Van. I'm just going to jump in here for a quick second and ask you that if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Click that notification bell. And share this out on the socials if you can. And one more thing, leave a comment. We absolutely read them and we will respond to them. All right, back to the podcast. Fair enough. But we're not here to talk about to these guys about their weather. Because uh, <laughs> right now it's all hot, so it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> we're here to talk about AI, which at some point will probably do our weather forecast for us and probably produce better results because can't be any worse than what the guys do already. Um, but um, we had a great episode uh, where we talked about uh, how, how these guys are using AI in the church, some of their favorite apps, and um, just some of the different ways that they're using AI. But um, I wanted to get a little bit more specific uh, in another episode here, talking about some just some real good, like what have you guys learned some key tips and tricks for making sure you actually get good usage out of the various AI, whether it's uh, graphic or text or, uh, you know, whatever it is. Like how do you get real good, helpful, actual usable information out of it um, versus stuff that's just garbage? Or simple. Because a lot of times you get a decent answer, but it's like, well... I need more than that, you know? Sure. Sure. So, yeah. So, so uh, Douglas, let's start with you. Um, Cause I know you're using it a lot just day to day, even asking like how, what have you learned? How do you get the best info out of it? Um, what, whichever, whatever you're trying to do at the moment. Yeah. It depends on the program, obviously, but uh, with, with like chat GPT, it's just to, I guess over time you learn uh, what things to say and what things not to say and try not to like get it going on too many topics. It'll start talking about something you don't want to talk about or um, obviously just like um, re replying and just mo going on and on and on in a long conversation instead of just like, like uh, the simple answer it can give. But then if you just keep asking and keep digging and um, there's even like a button that lets you just like, regenerate the response you're like i didn't like that response give me another response or um or 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 taking prompts from that and putting it into other programs and helping having it help you use the other programs and um yeah i mean it just depends on the program photoshop same thing you get like you get three i think versions of whatever you're asking for and you got to go through them and it's like okay now i, I need to i need to know something i need to know how to use layers i need to know how to what my you know what the staff wants and what the end result is so it's not just a a one click button fix it is definitely a multi-faceted long process that that helps you get better results spending more time knowing something about it instead of i, I don't go into things that i know nothing about and try to use ai it's like that's great i just know more of nothing because i don't know what you're talking about you know like <laughs> quantum physics or something like i started getting into quantum physics on my own personal stuff list reading and it's like okay you're using a lot of language i don't understand so but. yeah the one so you mentioned uh photoshop the one thing like one tip that i'll give people that i didn't realize and isn't like super clear is how um photoshop is actually deciding what it should generate based on. And it's all based on whatever layer you have selected. So if you have like 20 layers in your layer stack and you say like you select something and say generative fill, it's gonna do or 
uh, or expand or whatever, it's going to do that based on whatever layer you're on. So if you're at the very top and uh, have your top layer selected and select it, it's going to look at the entire image. It's I, I think, I don't know this for sure, I think what's happening in the background is it's rendering out, it's like kind of merging all those layers together, uploading that, doing the generation, then downloading it and making it the, making it that generation. But uh, so one really helpful thing is just to make sure you're on the correct layer and don't be on, uh, you know, if you're just adjusting something in the background, you have a bunch of, you know, textures and text and all of that kind of stuff, select that background layer and do the generation there. And then all that other stuff is going to sit on top of it. Um, that's a really easy place to get messed up. And when you're doing imagery stuff, the more that you can have flexibility, the better, because you don't really like if you're generating on that top layer out of 20 and you need to make a change to something you've now you're probably going to have to do a regeneration um, there so that's one that i i notice often the other one is just how many times you have to generate stuff um, i think a lot of people think that ai is like this magic bullet that knows exactly what you're thinking and is going to give you exactly what you're thinking on the first try and that can happen it can happen but um, like mid journey, when you put a prompt in, you're, uh, rolling a one in 4 billion dice of what response you're going to get, because it all starts with a random value. That's one in 4 billion. And you can do a lot of things to like narrow that focus down, but you're still starting with a random generator as the starting point of all of this. So thinking that you're going to get the right generation, even on the first, second or third try is naive because it's not exactly uh, like you're setting yourself up for frustration and fa failure if you think you're going to get the right answer on the first response. Um, you know, I was doing a graphic and I generated like of these sneakers and I generated like mm, 200 different sneakers before I got one that I liked. And then once I got that one, it was another 20 generations of like doing little tweaks to get things to sit the way that I wanted them to. And so, yes, you can dream up and get whatever you can imagine, but sometimes it takes a long time to get there. Um, I've also learned that AI is really bad for perfectionists um, because you can generate until you get exactly what you want. And so uh, if you're uh, Enneagram one like me or uh, lean towards perfectionism in any way, uh, you got to be really careful and say, like, maybe I should only give myself 30 minutes to generate before I like take what I got or I'm only going to give myself five tries until I start. Um, because you can sit there and just end up generating for a long time. Even even text responses in ChatGPT of like, well, can you give me a better email for this? Um, maybe this try will get better, or maybe this alteration on that will be better. Um, but you really kind of have to put some limits in place. Well, I think that's where the creativity know your know what you like. You said know what your boundaries are. I remember somebody asked me, you know, I I've been a live engineer, audio engineer most of my life. And somebody said, well, why don't you do studio work? And I'm like, well, because studio work is too tedious for me. I can't stand it because basically when it all comes down to it, it's the producer and and the the engineer just saying, well, that was a good take. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think? And what I was thinking is that the guitar players uh, take five takes ago was the best take. And you guys have absolutely lost all perspective on this. And I think chat GPT or any of the AI stuff can be that exact same thing. If you don't like have a, like you said, Brad, have a plan, limit yourself, you yeah. know, cause I think you can get lost in all the, yeah. you know, like, I don't even know. I think the third, the fourth one was better. And now I don't know, <laughs> you know, right. Well, because at the end of the day, it's generating content ideas, um, but it's not the decider, right? You're the decider. Um, yeah, that's and, yeah. That's the whole idea. Uh, Rob um, Lauder, uh, I can't remember what church he's at, um, who's huge in the AI world and in church stuff. He, you know, always talks about having a human in the loop. Um, so you, cause you can set up fully automated workflows for a lot of this stuff. You can have an image be generated and then automatically posted to Instagram and then have an AI bot 
respond to all of the comments and DMs for that. Like you can have this fully AI automated workflow, but if you don't have a human in the loop, then it's going to like go off the rails and do all sorts of weird stuff. And, or like there is like, what's the point of that? Like, that's like, what's the point of having, I mean, at the end of the day, we could see a whole, like all of Instagram, just be a bunch of AI talking to each other. And there's no humans there anymore because it's all gen AI generated comments and bots and all of that. And it's like, that's what Twitter turned into for a long time was it was just like bots dumping in content and talking to each other. And it was just like this hellscape, you know, of like, this is not fun. This is not real. Um, and so, yeah, that's just one of those things to consider cut, in cut the midst of, the, of, all of that. Social, social media say that again so it kind of takes the social out of social media <laughs> absolutely like yeah what's the what's the point of that uh if you so having that human in the loop um in the whole process is so important because that's where you have the choice. You know, some people are like, well, I'm really worried about AI. And it's like, well, you have the choice of how much AI to use and how to use it and where it gets used. You are not, it's not being forced on you. You can turn it all off. Well, I think back to what yeah. you said about the creativity, the, you know, that you still have to be a creative person. You still have to have talent and understand, define and, and being able to discern what is good and what is junk that doesn't take that out. And I think a lot of people think, well, I'll just use AI and I won't have to work at it and I won't have to think about it and I won't have to do all that kind of stuff. And that's just gonna start putting out the same junk that we have now uh, that we don't like. It'll do this exactly right. the same thing. Are you, are you describing the current state of movies, pretty much? Movies, music, a lot of things, <laughs> yes. Yes, it's, it's, I think AI, I mean, you guys can correct me, but AI is, is a little bit like uh, the whole corporate, um, everybody, absolutely everybody in a company has, has an opinion and it gets taken out of the hands of the director, the producer, the artist, and then it just becomes this, you know, uh, movie by, I think a lot of the movies that we see right now and even a lot of the music we see right now is by committee. And it's, it just takes the creativity right out of it. If you let, AI control it all and you don't have your a say then it takes because you're the brainchild of it you're the one who started it it should still should have your DNA fingerprint whatever you want to say on it at the end it can't all of a sudden become this you know innocuous whatever you know because that's what's the point of creating at that point right and Douglas, I don't know if this is true for you or not, but what I feel like AI has given me is it's helped me create better things. It doesn't necessarily, it hasn't necessarily given me more time, <laughs> hasn't necessarily made things faster in some ways. I'm just getting to do more or better things. Like I don't feel like my day has gotten shorter because I'm using AI. It just feels like I'm moving further and faster because of it. Would you relate to that? Or do you feel like you have more space and time? I think it depends on what I'm working on. So like, sure. I'm not a graphic designer. I know how to use the tools, but I'm more of a person who takes things, like I like photography and video because the creativity content's there and I put it together. So. Uh, so like gra graphic design, it's just allowing me to do more. But when it comes to things like um, tech support, it's definitely speeding me up. Um, another uh, app that I didn't mention earlier is called Mac Whisper, which is like a transcriber. And so we transcribe our sermons with it and it is like 99% correct. And we have a human that goes through and kind of cleans it up, but that definitely speeds us up. Um, it just depends on the app. I mean, I definitely have wasted time, you know, like running yeah. prompts over and over and over. And or you know, sometimes when I get uh, stuck in a rut like that, I'll just switch to a different app. It's like you were talking about all the image ones. And um, I, I, I don't do a ton of it, but I do enough of it that I'm like, I can just use chat GPT now. Because I was getting confused. I was getting frustrated with like stable diffusion through uh, or no mid journey through discord because I I think they came out with it now, but you couldn't like go back and fix an image that they had created. Um, or, you know, you can use seeds and things like that to try to like stay on track. But with, with ChatGPT, you can just tell it to, hey, fix that thing that you just made. 
right. keep the conversation going. So, but yeah, some, some spaces I definitely have saved time. I mean, I just used it the other night, uh, to EQ a violin because I was in a room that, um, it's just a newer room for us. And it was a different, it was a student that I've never had her violin in there before. And I was in a hurry and I screenshotted the EQ I already had told it all the instruments, the style of music we were doing, this room information, stuff like that. Tried to help me get it closer, gave me some tips. They use some of them, but hmm. just, just depends on the situation and how under, under the gun I am. And if like, like you said, like, I don't, I don't want to um, just get the simple answer and the fast answer. And I'm a perfectionist too. So like, I gotta have it right. So I'm going to obviously always add to it always. And, and fix it and adapt it to we call it sailorville like sound like it's the sound our church sounds like so it's like there's things that we do even though with the vbs song that we created i mean i listen to them and listen to them and i'm like this is not us this is not us until one matched so hmm. yeah uh the couple other uh one other tool when you're talking about like switching between them. Um, so there's a thing called Magi um, that Dustin, I'm forgetting his last name, uh, in the church world created. And it's all of the large language models and image generators all under one roof. Um, and so you can switch between ChatGPT and Gemini and Llama and Claude and all of these large language models all in one place. Plus, one of the cool things that he has that I think a lot of people are maybe unaware of is you can tell the AI like what persona to have and it will be better at different tasks um, because yes, it has all of this information, but when you point it in a certain direction, then it gets better at it versus just being a general assistant. And so a lot of people when they're using uh, large language models, they're using it as a general assistant, but they don't realize like, well, if you ask it to be a doctor or to be a whatever, it's going to be way smarter about all of those things. And so Magi has personas and has actually tons of pre-built personas that you can select before you even start typing. You can do this in ChatGPT, but you really only have like one spot and you have to like retype it every time to tell it uh, its deal. But it can be really helpful because you can say like, well, I want Want you to be a coder right now and now i want you to be a creative writer and now i want you know and you can get those different uh personas to to help you and um stay under one roof with it all um so that's that's a pretty cool uh option as well i think that's a that's a cool note for people who are using um any of those uh, apps for creating text content is to think about who who your audience is because that's that's something i know uh we've even started kind of filtering our social media posts through chat gpt with you know if this one we're really hoping reaches pastors it's like filter that mm -hmm. through hey speak this for, to a pastor you know and it'll take what we wrote and just mostly make it better i don't think i've i've ever gotten one that i didn't have to tweak at least a little but um or uh, i know i had one time where i was i was I was stuck on an email. I was trying to write to um, a uh, an IT director, and it's like, man, I just I need a little help getting around the corner on this one. So it was like, all right, rewrite this for an IT guy, and it it does a pretty good. It's so funny because you see the results, and it's just like, oh yeah, that is something my IT guy would say. <laughs> right, you do it with podcast questions. So take the sermon yeah. transcript, dump it in, ask for podcast questions, and then we're like, okay, now target this towards because our, our podcast is more towards Christians like to go farther with the Q and a of the sermon. So we'll say, okay, we're targeting believing Christians. Maybe if it's a woman's podcast, we tune it towards mm -hmm. moms, and whatever. So, mm -hmm. well, I think that's, yeah. I think that's really early on, like before Gem when Jim and I was barred, I, that's when I started using it. And early on that it, it was re it was super crucial that you, you had to have a persona to when you asked it questions or the answers just made zero sense, you know? And the one thing I think they've gotten a lot better at is they, they've at first, when you said as a, you know, audio video professional, blah, 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 it would insert that phrase in the content, like over and over and over again. And as an audio visual, you know, professional, then it would give you the next line and you're like, 
And then you'd have to go in and I would go in and go only use this phrase one time. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would go and it would change it. It would be fine, you know, but it was like, right. it, just, and this was like just in six, eight months, you know, and then when, of course, when they changed over to Gemini, it changed, like, it got so much better, like, very quickly. And I think this is, a, the, one of the things is the, it, Moore's Law is absolutely in play with AI, like, at a, at lightning speed. Every iteration mm -hmm. is not just a little bit better, but so much better. Yeah. 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 I mean, I started, I started doing image generations 18 months ago, um, and I've used it on basically every project since. And the amount of quality increase is just insane when you look at today versus 18 months ago and, and what's possible. So, um, yeah, the one, the one tip that I wanted to mention that I think sometimes gets overlooked is how you talk to these based on how they were trained and what they're meant to do. And it's all getting like equaled out a little bit, but like ChatGPT and other large language models are trained on natural language. And so you can talk to it with natural language, but image models were trained on tagging and audio was trained on tagging, not natural language. So when you're talking to a uh, image generator, if you use the phrase photorealistic, it's actually one of the worst things that you can say to a uh, image generator because photorealistic means that somebody tried to create something that looks like a photo. They didn't create a photo. They didn't take a photo. And so a better phrase to use uh, when you're if you're trying to create a realistic image uh, in a prompt and you want to make sure it has a super realistic isn't to put like hyper realistic, crazy details, ultra 25 K, you know, like all these weird things. People people type in like 16 K and 8 K. And I'm like, that's not even a common phrase in our industry to talk about right now. Why would that be helpful with a photo? But what is helpful is to say like F 1.8. If you mm -hmm. put in the phrase F 1.8, it tells that image generator a ton of information. It says this should be taken on a camera. It says how shallow the depth of field is. It says, you know, like all of these different things. If you say golden hour, you know, with a photo, it's going to immediately uh, say a lot about what the lighting should look like, time of day, you know, all of the different things. And so thinking about your prompts in the way the thing was created is really, really helpful. Now I said that it's becoming more and more natural because Dolly 3, which is a part of ChatGPT, that's all natural language. Uh, so when Douglas was saying like, just fix this one part of that image, like it can know what you mean because it understands natural language versus uh, other image generators, you have to select it and just say what that should be. You can't just say like, fix that part of the image. But a lot of them are starting to incorporate um, large language models as their receiver of information as kind of like a go between between you and the actual generation process. But that's just something that I think a lot of people miss. And then they're like frustrated when they start doing it. And it's like, well, you're actually talking to it the wrong way, which is kind of what you guys were just talking about with like the your IT verse person versus somebody else is like, you talk to that person the wrong way, and they don't understand you. And so you you need a translator, you know, in between there. And or you need to understand them better to know how to talk to them. So I, I, I think that's really that was really helpful for me when I started to really understand that I started to get better prompts and I started to get less frustrated um, when I didn't get the results that I wanted. Well, and I think, well, I think to, that, to that point, I think it's one of those things where, you know, I think a lot of people think this is just going to I'm going to I can be a complete idiot and just start talking to this and it will it will make me 10 times smarter. And that's not right. really you know, like, like you guys said, going back to the beginning, it, 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 it helps you be better. It doesn't take place. It doesn't take the place of you having intelligence, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. You have to know the question to ask. Right. Right. Well, that's, that's what I'm hearing you say, Brad, because like when you say something like photorealistic, that's not something a photographer would say photographers right. would actually key in on things like the lighting, things like the depth of field. They're going to communicate in the way a photographer would communicate versus, yep. you know, uh, a 16 year old girl going, well, I just want it to look like a photo. It's like, well, right. okay, great. That doesn't tell me anything. Right. And so I think, you know, as, as people are getting concerned about like, does this going to put 
skilled tradespeople out of work, you still have to give it the right intel in order for it to produce good results. And so those who understand the language and understand what they're looking for are going to be able to produce those results much better, much faster, because they know how to they know how to communicate what they're looking for. That's a new job title. It's called prompt engineer. And they pay a lot. Well, companies were paying a lot at the beginning because yeah. they didn't know what they were doing. And right, there'd right. be the guys like us that were like, we know how to do it. It's not that crazy. Let's just talk to it the way you need to talk to it. And I'm sure right. that's falling off, but it was definitely a thing in the beginning was right. a deal. Well, it's communications. I mean, we, we've had that job for years in, in most worlds. It's called sales um, because that's what sales did was you learned how to communicate with different groups of people. Um, in order to hopefully achieve or get them into a solution that made sense. Um, it's, it's no different. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to communicate clearly and with the right information if you want to get good results. Well, I think yeah. taking it back to, to church, the, 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 I think what makes a great technical director, creative director, person like that, um, is that they can take what they do and and communicate it in a way that like pastors understand because you know mm -hmm. i mean if you're a tech person we we've said this forever you know uh the pastors do not understand what we what we do i mean they know what we do they don't understand what we do and so just like with communicating to pastors to try to get them to understand why does this think why is this project going to cost one hundred and fifty thousand dollars when you think it should cost twenty thousand dollars is because of these things and to be able to communicate that. So the skill of communication is not, is not going to go away. <laughs> you still, you're still going to have to interpolate. And, and Van, I think that's why I want to encourage everybody who's listening to use AI is because if you don't know how it works and you don't understand how it works, you are going to be left in the dust of the future. This isn't a passing fad like some other technologies are. Like this is not an NFT. Like NFTs might have a long standing history. It might be like a QR code where it was a joke for a long time and now it's like used all the time and nobody thinks it's a joke anymore, right? Because I thought QR codes were like, this is the dumbest thing, just type in the website, who needs this? But now we can see the purpose of it. And M NFTs might be that, but AI already, I mean, like chip manufacturers are manufacturing phones and devices with dedicated sections of the chip just to do AI computing, right? That is way different than like, hey, can your camera read a QR code, you know, on your phone? Like, this is a whole different level of integration that they're putting into products. So AI is not going anywhere. It's so going to change and more. It's not 3D television, right? Right, exactly. And so we, we can't ignore it because of like past technologies like that, that were jokes, that were like a passing fad. And the reason that I got started in AI, honestly, is because I wanted to understand the implications for me, for our faith family and for my kids. I wanted to understand like, how is this going to change my kids' education? How is this going to change the people in our faith family and their view on God? And how is it going to change their view on what the world looks like and how, you know all of those different things and if you don't understand it you can't educate somebody else and you're you're typically going to take a posture of defensiveness versus openness you know you're going to be skeptical of it and so i think the most important thing for people to do is just to try figure it out try to use it try to learn something about it and or at least learn about it even if you're not using it understand how it works because i think there's tons of people out there who are claiming doom and gloom and all of this stuff who actually have never really utilized it. They haven't put in 10,000 hours with AI to understand it. And so why would I ever listen to their opinion on what AI can or can't do, you know? Um, so there's some different people out there. Uh, one person, uh, I think her name's Simone, maybe. Um, she is a AI thinker and futurist and stuff. And she was on this interview and they're talking about like implications of AI in schools and uh, education. And they're like, well, isn't this going to ruin education? She's like, no, uh, AI is a new calculator. Just because we had calculators, we didn't stop teaching math. Mm -hmm. Math just got harder. 
she's like, AI is going to change education, but it really needs to change how we teach, not necessarily what we expect of students. We're going to get right. critical thinking. And she gave an example of like a writing class. She's like, I want to see teachers like in class say with AI brainstorm and write a paper or, or you can do that as your homework and now come back to school and take that paper. And now without any computer assistance, I want you to improve that paper and turn both of them into me. So I can see the before and I can see the after and I can, I'm going to grade you on your critical thinking skills. I'm going to grade you on your understanding of like how to write, not necessarily what you wrote. Um, and I think that's like just such a different way to look at things that will open up people's minds to see like, yes, AI is here to stay, but also here's how it can be beneficial. And here's why we don't need to be scared of it. Yeah. So sorry for that rant, but I just think it's really, really important. No, I mean, that's good. I mean, at the end of the day, what uh, what I've learned, at least in the last 20, 30 years, it used to be, you know, people would say, well, people aren't smart because of the lack of access to information or the lack of access to um, knowledge. And I think what we've proven in the last uh, 20 years is that it's not a lack of access that is our problem. It is the critical thinking because we have we have access to all the data now. Uh, right. whether it's true or not. Um, the challenge is, is we don't have necessarily a generation who has learned how to think through all of that material to know whether that's good information, bad information, whether that's useful, what I, what I can do with it. And, and so I think you're right on. I think at the end of the day, the regurgitating facts, regurgitating uh, historical data is, is going to be less and less the priority. Um, and it's got to be placed more and more on, okay, what do I do with that information? Um, and, and I think that's the area that AI still uh, is a long ways off of, is, is telling us what to do with it. It can give us all the info, it can give us all the images, it can give us all the video, we still have to decide. Is it useful, is it good, is it helpful? And making a, an AI be a good human, um, let alone a follower of Jesus, uh, you know, so we could say like good human is here and follower of Jesus maybe is above that uh, or hopefully is above that. But uh, AI is not going to take that over. And so when you think about like the jobs and skills that people are going to need in the future as like information is easier to understand, it's going to be like, how do you, how are you a great coworker? How are you a great spouse or mm -hmm. parent? How are you a kind person who can get along with people of varying different viewpoints? How can, you know, like all of those skills are going to be so much more important than like, I know how to plug this thing into that thing to make it do this thing, you know, like people are going to be able to figure that out pretty easily with AI, but figuring out how to do that with a smile on your face and a great attitude, um, AI is not going to be able to teach you. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, very cool. Um, there's a lot of, boy, two, two good episodes on AI and, and in six months, it's all going to be wrong, right? Uh, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> It'll be expanded uh, and better. There you go. There you go. That's the right way. So yeah, so we might we'll, we might see you guys here again in uh, six to 12 months. And we'll talk about all the ways that it's different and better. But uh, lots of good helpful uh, tips and tricks. Um, per usual, we'll uh, some of the apps and stuff that the guys mentioned and their their emails, we'll throw those down in the show notes below. But uh, yeah, just want to thank you for watching the insights podcast. Uh, Van, any, any parting thoughts? No, I, I think this is this is going to be an ongoing conversation. I don't I don't think it just ends here. It just because, like you said, it's. I, I even think back when you said that I was thinking back to videos we made uh, five years ago on you know just like anything, uh, lighting console or whatever. Uh, I wish I could. Go, you we want to go back and just take all those videos down. They don't mean anything anymore. They're just there. It's mm -hmm. just noise. You know. I mean, Brad, you've done stuff, pro presenter videos for ever and uh you know all the stuff you did for pro presenter four uh you know <laughs> may have some relevance but you know uh, seven is completely different than even six and so you right. know you just it's i think it's one of those things where we've constantly got to be talking about how to do it now where things are now and not yep. you know um, I think, you know, so that I think ongoing conversation about this, keeping it going, I think where the where the creativity and the and the intelligence lies is, like you guys said, knowing what 
how to use it, not just yeah. to use it, but how do we use it? Yeah. And that's something we talk about in church all the time with all the, all of the technology. How do we use it? How, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can go, you can, I'm, I'm sure all, all of us have gone to churches that had million dollars worth of technology and you're like, wow, that's not good. <laughs> it's, it's just it, for what it, purpose? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just because you have the stuff and if you can't use it correctly, if you don't have the, the intelligence and the creativity and to, to make it, um, you know, it did like little things, just like, uh, Doug, like you, you saying it's not Sailorville. Like that's a giant thing for somebody who works in an organization to go, that's not who we are. And, mm -hmm. and no, just because somebody generated it, it, you know, in AI, there's no, you can't just go, oh, well it generated AI, so it's good. So we're just going to use it. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody has got to read that or whatever and go, mm, yeah, it's cool. Not, it's not applicable for us. And I think that's where it's going to, you know, to your point, Brad, just to learn about it, to understand how it works and understand how to talk about it and talk to it is going to be the, where people are going to really need to, you know, up their game. So, yeah. yeah, good stuff. Well, thanks for, thanks for watching, listening and, uh, check out our other podcasts in the insights podcast lineup growing and growing. And if you've got topics you'd like us to cover, drop a note below, yep. like, and subscribe. We, we appreciate you checking things out. Yep. We will see you next episode. See you later. you want to hmm. we are recording so you can finish your food and when, when, he's, when he's done eating whenever you're done eating it's fine Let, let's Man, make sure that we, can we have this up. be the intro i uh the this actual will actually be the outro <laughs> <laughs> okay perfect. this will be after after the click and subscribe i'll just tag this on to the end of duke eating what did and you now, have since I do clean way. feeds it'll just be duke with no context power, whatsoever I just had a pint of a power bar. That was, uh, you know, when Ben starts talking, I figure it's a good time to take take a bite of some. So you're not wrong, but <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> All right.